So what an experience that was. This was my first ever marathon, so I really have nothing else to compare it to, but I wanted to go over some of the experiences, some of the learning that I had on the, the race itself. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the good things that I experienced on the race. Like the organization was just top notch. Like I haven't experienced or I, I couldn't imagine uh, organizing and putting together bibbing and getting organized 45,000 people for this race. And it was just top notch. The Expo Center was amazing. It was a huge old uh, airport that had been abandoned. Well, it's not abandoned. It's used in Berlin now for a lot of events. And it was just this whole, the whole airport, the tarmac, everything for the Expo Center, which was really great uh, for that. Um, the route itself, beautiful scenery, uh, going through some of the most iconic places in Berlin. And so it was wonderful seeing all those. Like I, I'd visited Berlin quite a few times before this, but uh, some of these parts of the city I'd never been to. And so it was really an experience to see those, especially during the race with all the crowds. And the crowd itself really was <laughs> really was great. Uh, there were some sections that were thin crowds, uh, but that's to be expected. All the major thoroughfares had a really wonderful crowd. Uh, plenty of signs giving us energy, all that. And so it was really, really great. The water stations, the fueling stations were amazing. The I never came to a fueling station or a water station where uh, there wasn't enough or there weren't enough people helping out with the, uh, the different supplies that they were giving out. So that was really great as well. Now, it wasn't all sunshine and roses on the track itself or the course itself. Uh, some of the areas of the course were filled with construction zones. And so it would actually funnel the racers all together. And so it was kind of difficult to break up some of the, um, the log jams that were going through when we were racing. And so, it, you know, it weren't too many uh, construction sites, but there were enough to sort of really impede some of the, the breakup of the, the, the crowding of the racers in there. Uh, also, one other thing that I, I just really was not expecting at all were on the road itself, there were these ruts from the cars just sitting uh, in the street and you'd have these valleys in the, in the street. And so I was trying to run around those, but as I was running around those, my, my heels or my ankles were just uh, moving around. Um, and this is actually one thing that from this race that I discovered is that I actually have sort of this overpronation in my racing, especially when I'm getting tired and my knees actually started to, to bulge in uh, from, from all of those, as well as, you know, my, myself as well. It's not all just the road itself, because there were plenty of people who weren't experiencing that. Um, the other thing too, that I did not expect, and I was not prepared for this. And this actually, I think, contributed to some of the slowdown that I had at the end of the race was one, I had brought my own gels to the race, I but I had only brought four. I needed about eight. I was expecting about a four hour marathon time. And so I was expecting about every half hour I would take a, a gel and I would go from there. But I only brought four because I was traveling internationally. I didn't want to bring too many uh, with me. And so I was expecting there to be uh, the Martin gels that was sponsoring the race there. <laughs> there was only one station through the entire marathon at around kilometer 26. Um, and so I was not prepared for the different types of fuel that they were offering. Now, they did have the Martin drink. I hadn't prepared with that. And so I wasn't. I was a little iffy on whether or not I should take that. Uh, another thing that they did have, which I had prepared for, a lot of the long runs that I have done, uh, the water that I take or the liquid that I take is tea. It's cold tea, but it has a little caffeine. I add a little salt to it. And so they actually had tea along the race route uh, for the, the racers. And so I felt comfortable taking that. And there was a, a substitute fuel that I was able to take for uh, the different fueling stations. Now, one thing that I just I did, had no no way of dealing with was the cups that the the drinks were in, the liquids were in. 
Um, I'm used to paper cups where I can just pinch off the top and then sip from it and continue to run as I'm drinking. Well, these were sort of a harder plastic cup and it's you know for recycling, it makes it a lot easier for them to recycle this uh, material instead of just throwing it away. Well, uh, I couldn't pinch the cup without it breaking. And so when I was drinking, uh, it would just spill all over the front of me, which is fine for the water, no problem. But when I'm drinking sweet tea, you know, and it drips down, it starts, you know, getting my uh, clothes all sticky. And so I actually, by the end of the race, I had some chafing from, from the sticky clothes, uh, which is the first time I've ever really had any chafing. So I wasn't expecting that. I didn't prepare for that as well. Um, the other thing, too, that was just, you know, it, it's my own complaint. I could, you know, some people, they may be able to deal with it. But there were a lot of people in Europe, a lot of people in Berlin along the race route, the crowd that were just smoking along the race route. And so I had these wafts of uh, smoke coming in my face as I was running. So maybe I'm just being a little precious about that. But uh, I did not like the smoke from the crowds uh, coming in my face as I was running. Now, uh, some of the specifics uh, about my particular race. Now, I'm going to have to look these up here. I, I actually had a fairly consistent race uh, all the way up to, it looks like, uh, about a little over the halfway point. So I did a half marathon, really consistent, um, aiming for my four-hour marathon time and I was on pace to get that actually just a little bit under the the four hour time which was great you know that was my stratosphere goal uh, getting under four hours um, but after the halfway point because I think of the things that I mentioned before the fueling that I wasn't expecting the uh, cups of water that were sort of spilling over me and then sort of the, the chafing that I was getting, I actually had to slow down about one uh, kilometer per, uh, per sorry, one minute per kilometer uh, in the last half of the race. And so that put me at a final finishing time of four hours and 18 minutes. Now, I'm I'm happy about that. Like my goal was to finish the race. Um, and so I did that. I accomplished the goal. Now, another thing that sort of went wrong, totally wrong on the race, and I sort of want to talk about this, and so I've got it here, is if you watch the race course, you see that about uh, kilometer 27, the GoPro just cuts out because um, I run out of battery. And I don't know if you can hear my cat. She's meowing. She's getting a little disturbed <laughs> right now, but it ran out of battery. So what I usually do is I've got the GoPro here and I connect it with just a simple USB cable. I've got an external uh, door there for USB cable. And then I have an external battery that's connected. It's very simple. Like the battery just goes in my running pouch. I connect the, the wire to both ends and I just run with it, you know, mount it on my head. Uh, and I'm able to tuck away the wires so they don't bother me and they're, they're not in the way or, or anything like that. Well, I had been running with th this particular cable and practicing the entire training cycle. Like this, this has been the cable that I used the entire training cycle for all of the videos that you, um, have been watching for the, the virtual runs. And as it sits in the, uh, running pouch, I would, you know, kink <laughs> the cable a little bit so that it would fit in the pouch and it would then come out the, the door there on the, the pouch. Well, after all of that training, you know, the 16 weeks of training, this cable finally started to fail. Now, it wasn't a complete failure on it. It would still deliver some charge. And so when I would plug it in, I would see on the GoPro that it had a charging symbol on the battery. And so I thought everything was fine. Well, it was not because, it was because the GoPro wasn't able to negotiate the, the different types of power levels to draw from the battery. And so it was just sipping small, small sipping the, the power from the battery. And so it was only able to let the GoPro run for about two hours and 44 minutes before the internal battery 
um, just completely died. It, it ran out. Now, I know GoPro says you're supposed to run without the battery um, for just that reason. Like if the battery uh, goes dead, it goes dead. It doesn't just automatically switch to the external battery. Um, but what I found with this particular GoPro and no matter the combination and the other people have as well. So it's not just me. Uh, if I run with just the external battery, the GoPro doesn't pull enough power for the stabilization and all the horizon, uh, horizon leveling and, and all of that kind of stuff. And so what it'll do is it'll just say not enough power and then shut itself off. Even if it's, you know, the external battery is fully charged. So what I'm doing now or what I'm going to do, and I don't have it here right now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I've got, obviously I've got a new cable <laughs> for it and I've uh, bought a cable with a, an elbow on it to begin with. So it's already in the position that I want it to be. And so there won't be any bending of that cable. Now, another thing that I have, uh, I'm putting in the mix is just an inline, uh, tester or the ability to see how much, uh, uh, voltage and amperage is going through the cable so that I can see how much it's actually pulling through the cable. And I can check that on the run because I can't, I can't check what's going on, uh, on the GoPro as I'm running. And, and so that's hopefully a strategy that will help prevent the battery from just completely failing as I'm doing these runs. Cause it's happened before, um, on some of my other longer runs. And so hopefully that's a better strategy that I'll be able to take to, uh, prevent that from happening. Now here, here's some of the, the swag you, you can see I'm wearing the swag here, the shirt that I got. And then also this is the, the metal. So you can see it's got uh, Kipchoge on the back here. And if you didn't know, uh, I don't know why you're watching this channel if you didn't know this, but uh, the at the Berlin Marathon that I was running in, Kipchoge did break the world record. He got two hours and one minute and I think like nine seconds, I think it was. Yeah, because when I was doing, when I got to the halfway point, so my half marathon was his finish. So he had completed the entire thing when I was just getting to the halfway point. My halfway was two hours, one minute and six, <laughs> six seconds. So we were only a few seconds off from that. But so it's got uh, Kipchoge on the, the back here. And then on the front, we have uh, Berlin, I think. What is it here? Yeah, it's just some of the sites, some of the, the uh, classic monuments and everything like that all put together on the uh, back or the front of the uh, marathon medal, which is, it's really great. Uh, it's really great design, amazing uh, likeness there. So that's fun there. I got some other things too, like a, uh, uh, what is a, uh, poncho, <laughs> the poncho. And so that was, you know, helpful after the race. And so it was a really, really fun race. Like, I had some moments when I, after the halfway point where I was like, why am I doing this? And I, I guess everyone says that, like, what am I doing? Um, but after the finish line, after I had finished, after I had got that uh, accomplishment for myself, um, I was like, I need to do this again. Like there were X, Y, Z reasons why what happened happened on the race, why I finished at a 418, which again, it's amazing. I'm super happy about it, but how I could do better, right? What I could do to have a, a better strategy, especially with the the fueling and the water and, and all this kind of stuff. Like one of the things, and so I've, I've been talking to, to other racers, um, one of the things that's, you know, I, in a marathon setting, right? So not a shorter race, not something like that with, with, the water stations is, you know, giving myself permission to walk during the water stations and just drink what I need to drink at those water stations. I'm not a Kipchoge, right? I'm not a, an elite athlete. I'm just, you know, an average runner. And so it's okay for me to s just walk at the water stations. I don't need to run through the water stations and, you know, this, this elite strategy of, of drinking while, while I'm running. Now, some of the shorter races, and if it's uh, convenient, 
yeah, I did that on my half marathon. I was able to do that paper cups <laughs> for that. Um, I brought my own, uh, goose and, and everything like that. So, uh, the, the, the fueling there on that one was, uh, I was prepared for. And so on a next one, I'd be able to, I think, do a little bit better for that, you know? Um, and hopefully one of the things that I'm working on is that overpronation. Like, um, I don't know, like I might, sh I might put something up here. Um, the, the overpronation <laughs> was very pronounced by the end of the race. It looked like I needed to go pee when I was running. My knees were just so close together. Um, when they were doing that. So I'm working on that, right? I'm strengthening my ankles, working on the overpronation, trying to make that not as, uh, uh, an issue. And I've noticed right away already some of the things that I'm doing on the runs, uh, that, uh, I'm doing right now is working, right? I usually almost always, uh, had pain in my ankles when I was running, nothing bad or anything like that, but just something noticeable, right? There was something that I could notice. Uh, I All I did was I got some cheap, well, not cheap, this is like 30 bucks for it's a Dr. Scholl's uh, arch support. And I put them in my long run shoes. I could feel it right away on my right foot, right? My right foot was really like pressing on it. I was like, oh. And so it all it does really, it's not holding my foot up. It's not actually... Uh, preventing any motion or anything like that. I could overpronate, and I probably still am uh, in the the arch support shoe or with the arch support. But it gives me a little bit of a, a reminder, right, as I'm running that this is going on. And so uh, that's another thing that I'm working on to try and make it a little bit uh, better for the next time that I run this. So in fact, the week right after the Berlin Marathon, the London Marathon, uh, uh, what is it, lottery opened up. Now, I'm not in, you know, I just put it, my name in the lottery. I'm going to put my name in Chicago. Like, just I'm putting my name in some lotteries uh, to try and get into some different races. And we'll see what's coming up. So I'm going to take a break, right? I need a lot, some rest <laughs> after the marathon. Like it took me, so this is, this is, I'm, you know, a week or two out from the marathon. So it took me at least, uh, I'd say five days to be able to walk down some stairs without feeling some, some pain or some, some niggles in, in my legs, uh, when I was walking down some stairs and things like that. So, uh, just, there won't be as many, uh, videos, virtual runs coming out, but I will pick back up. Um, I do pick back up. So it's going to be about a week before you see the next video. One, two, three. <laughs> so I almost got away with doing that in one take, <laughs> but I had some technical difficulties. Uh, the camera, it ran out of space. Uh, it's just my phone. So it didn't have that much space, but I was at the end anyway. So there's not much more left. Uh, I was just saying, don't expect a, another video for like a week and then it'll be a little bit intermittent until we get a new training program and stuff like that. I might start doing some more discreet uh, runs, shorter runs, because um, I know a lot of people, they only do like half an hour or something like that. And so I'll probably focus on those shorter runs as well as maybe the longer runs as well so that there is that variety there. And the intermittent runs, I might not record. I might just go out and, and enjoy the run myself. Uh, but until then... I hope you enjoy the run.